we can actually expand further. If you think about uh, what kind of things can happen, what we call as, uh, but as we construct highways, what happens? Two things happen, or rather, the suburbs develop, right. So, as uh, travel time decreases, you would want to commute from further distances, that means, you would prefer expanding the region within which the work circle is there. Right, you start commuting from far. That is one. That is reactive. After the capacity is there, or based on travel time, you can travel further. But as soon as highway capacity itself is bigger, that region starts to develop. Right. Just imagine all the uh, what can you say? Uh, construction and township advertisement is for saying that a highway is going to come here, airport is going to come here, metro is going to come here. Just the mere news about highway capacity, capacity expansion itself has already resulted in development of the region and then your capacity follows, right. Just that mere fact of addition or just the mere fact of announcement of road construction itself results in uh, the size and region within your desired travel distance uh, to go up. So, he can bring that aspect also inside the system. Let us just call it a simple variable called as size of region within desired travel time. So, the size of region desired travel time becomes larger, then the overall population using the road network also increases. Okay. Uh, as travel time comes down, the size of region within the desired travel time is going to increase. As highway capacity becomes larger, the size of region that is going to be within the desired travel time is also going to increase. Or our own example within India, where even just the announcement of this road network expansion can result in the size of region within desired travel to increase. In Panvel, airport is going to come or bigger highway is coming, metro is coming, the price of land and building is already quadrupled in anticipation of all these things and by the time your road construction has finished, you are already under capacity. So, now our simple idea of okay, there is congestion, let us do the road expansion is not enough. We need to look at how okay, when this road construction is highway expansion, how are people affecting or purchasing the vehicles, how many trips they are making, how can what else affects attractiveness to driving as well as. So, all these things now has to go together, it is not enough for a government or policy maker as ourselves to only worry about just let us look at road construction, we leave everything else to market economy. No, you cannot, you need to, if you want to control this travel time, then all other we need to look at other places also like for example, Singapore is considering has, has done that you need to get a permit before you can add vehicles in the region. So, this is one loop which they are stifling by using policy, what is the average vehicles per person, then they have introduced delays, you need to stay there, you need to apply and after some time you get permission for doing that and that will effectively control vehicle in the region that controls your traffic volume, but then still people has to travel for so, that people has to be happy. So, if people takes long time to travel either in public transport or otherwise, travel does not need not be only in one transport, there will be always pressure to reduce that congestion. Delhi metro, before metro how are people travelling, but now also there is huge traffic. How will, how are they commuting before metro? So, that is because there are so many other dynamics that is happening into play other than simple road construction. As soon as it was there, people started buying more vehicles, average trip length increased trips per day increased, which again results and comes back to your travel time to satisfy whatever you are doing to similar levels as it was previously. And as I told even desired travel time is need not be exogenous, we assumed exogenous initially, but then you would like to also bring it endogenous to see where all we can have points of leverage to control it. Like to, to make driving less attractive, we can introduce more public transit, is it possible? How, how will it? get affected. 
So, that is a also a thing that we can try uh, because many times when you are looking at cars and vehicles it looks so nice, but what we also need to do worry about is public transit and they are dependent on and they are also sharing the same space it is not only for cars and private vehicles we also have public transit. Now, let us briefly look at this public transit aspect. So, let us just go with revenue. So, let us say public transit as ridership falls revenue is going to fall. Revenue is depends on your public transit people plus just for short I am going to write PT public transit uh, fares. So, I am going to have fare as well as I am going to have so the revenue is nothing but fare is whatever ticket price, ticket price and number of people can result in revenue falling. Yes, correct. Okay. Public. Oh, sorry. Yeah, public ridership increases, revenue increases. Okay, yeah, sorry, positive. But public transit also has costs to run the facility. Okay. So now costs and revenue it is going to affect my profit as revenue increases my profit increases as cost increases my profit falls down. As higher the profit I may be able to avoid do discounts or reduce the price of the fares right or if or if revenue starts falling down then I end up increasing the fares or profit falls down or I go into loss then I increase the fares right. So, that becomes negative feedback or I do two things if as profit falls down. So, it is kind of counter intuitive, but I told uh, let us give direction positive, but I want you to urge to think in terms of uh, deficit deficit think in terms of deficit in sense because all public transport transits are running in loss. So, it is easier to think in deficit. So, as more the loss happens a public transit is already in negative they are not making any money it is in loss then they can either increase the fare right. So, let me just change the direction of that loop let us just call it uh, deficit and I am just going to change the direction of it as revenue falls down deficit increases I just made a this thing and as deficit is deficit is more then I increase the fares. So, that is to increase revenue, but I do other thing also I change my public transit network network itself I stop some buses I have to cut costs I have to lay off people I have to stop buses it, it may not go somewhere right. So, which after some delay public transit network itself as deficit is deficit is large the network falls down as network falls down cost also falls down right or network is big then cost is big I need more buses I need more transport etcetera. So, this is your cost cutting this loop here is your uh, cost cutting loop this here is your fare revision loop. So, I am going to revise my fare uh, as my network is big my adequacy of public transport is big and uh, this is a very interesting loop. So, as my public transport network is good then my adequacy is good, but other way let us take a look at this ridership is falling. So, revenue is falling 
my deficit is increasing, so I am reducing the network. So, my adequacy of uh, public transit is going down. Then, what does government do? After a delay, after some time, it invests in mass transit. Your metros come in. This is your let me just call it as mass transit loop. No, if adequacy falls down, then they do mass transit, which increases the network size. So, as network size increases, it becomes adequate, right. So, this is when the government decides on mass transit, the cost cutting loop and that uh, I can do actually one more connection, this public transit, fare also affects the driving, as fare is more driving comes down, I can uh, complete the loop there. Oh yeah, fire affects your uh, ridership. I'm putting it indirectly through attractiveness driving, or you can do it here. Yeah, that's why public transit fare increases, attractiveness driving falls down, or fare comes down, attractiveness drive increase. Uh, fare increases. Oh, sorry, plus. Fare is higher, attractiveness driving is higher. Sorry, plus. Now let me quickly come back here and wrap up. Uh, so. That is saying that you know size of region we expect to go after the capacity is increased, but sometimes just the news of the capacity itself, people you know, we discuss that it can increase the size of the region. Like people invest in property just because highway is going to come 10 years later, that is what I meant. I think it is just to illustrate that there is no strong connection, but there is some link between these variables. So, we did all this actually. A nice uh, period up to this loop based on the descriptions that we just gave. One way is to again go through this loop to figure out what is happening. Each of these loops are nicely marked stroke of relationship, mass transit expansion, fire increase, cost cutting, and what happens when one increase and decrease, it gives a nice feel. There is one more link from this to the next one. The only new addition is this one size of region within travel time as it increases, it reduces the adequacy of public transit. People have already started occupying and what are doing something in Dombivili, but there is no bus facility there, there is no public transit there, but already that has expanded. So, then that will force you to buy vehicles. So, that so that as soon as new region comes and buses not even connected there, that means it has already become inadequate. So, that is uh, that you cannot get there on the bus loop. So, we had gone through all these things, started with open loop view, then moved to a closed loop, then dynamics of traffic volume, then growth of suburb mass transit death spiral. So, these kind of models age in better decision making. So, it is not just a simple highway construction. Now, you need to not only invest in one, you may need to invest in two, three things in parallel. Let us do construction at the same time, let us see how we can invest more funding to improve public ridership. At the same time, let us see how we can control the uh, traffic volumes by providing better facilities. If every region is going to have uh, you know a small economic area where you can buy your provisions and movies and all those things, amusement parks, gardens, etcetera, that can incentivize people to make smaller distance trips, right. So, you need to invest in multiple activities. So, these kind of narration helps in that level of planning.